Mass Ioneer clinicians and scientists are driven by a mission to find cures. Cures for blindness, deafness, diseases of the head and neck, and many more. Today we want to introduce you to some of these scientists and give you a taste of the bowl science that is going on right now at Mass Ioneer and at the Scapin's Eye Research Institute. First up is Dr. Albert Edge, a hearing researcher at Mass Ioneer's Eaton Peabody Laboratory, who has made major progress in his work. We had a, uh, a major paper uh, earlier this year in which we showed for the first time that the hair cells, which are the cells that detect sound in the inner ear, um, can be regenerated. And this has been a big challenge for many years. Um, it's really the cause of, of much of adult onset deafness, um, what we call sensory neural hearing loss due to noise damage or toxin damage or to aging. And so we showed for the first time that using a drug, which we discovered through experiments we did in the laboratory, um, that we could actually, after damage to these hair cells, bring them back. While Albert Edge is in his lab restoring hearing, Dr. Tina Stankovic is working on a different approach to help people hear better through a natural battery that exists in the inner ear. We have known for about 60 years that this potential exists inside the inner ear and in fact it's critical for normal hearing because it's a uh, electrical potential that drives uh, current through sensory cells uh, inside the inner ear and makes them release neurotransmitter and excite the auditory nerve. What the question that we asked is, is it possible to extract a little bit of this energy from the inner ear uh, without damaging hearing and use it to run electronics? And the answer is yes. Dr. Jin Lu, a scientist in the Ocular Genomics Institute, is studying the genes that cause inherited forms of blindness, such as Leber congenital amaurosis and retinitis pigmentosa. She wants to fix those genes and restore vision. The first step is to find the a cause of those inherited disease. So what we are doing now is to find the cause disease the genes for those inherited retinal disease. And we are using um, techniques called next gene sequencing or different uh, tools to find and discover the disease genes. In Dr. Michael Gilmore's lab, researchers are leading an ambitious effort to combat antibiotic-resistant superbugs. It's a super effort, and they are already making progress. One of our, our most exciting projects is coming up with new molecules, new compounds, new, new drugs uh, that are effective against these antibiotic-resistant bacteria. And in our Harvard-wide program, one of our partners is, is a world-leading biochemist who knows uh, about how bacteria make their, the different parts that allow them to cause disease. Uh, we've been working with her to come up with inhibitors of uh, staph, methicillin-resistant staph in particular, uh, things called MRSA. People hear about that. Uh, uh, and uh, we've come up with new molecules that inhibit that, even the resistant forms. When sinus surgeon Ben Blyer isn't in the operating room or seeing patients, he's innovating new techniques to develop drug delivery systems that could help cure central nervous system diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. When we perform surgery for tumors of the brain and try to remove them through the nose, what we wind up doing is creating a hole between the nose and the brain. And in order for these surgeries to be successful, we have to be able to seal these holes in a manner so that patients don't get infections or something called cerebrospinal fluid leaks or leakage of fluid around the brain after the surgery. Now, when we do that, we use the patient's own nasal lining to seal these defects or these holes between the brain and the nose. Now, it turns out that the lining of the nose is a very good method of delivering drugs into the body for two reasons. The first is the lining is very absorbent for drugs, and the second is that there's a very good blood supply to the nose, and so when you put a drug into the nose, it is very easily absorbed through the lining into the bloodstream and then can get into the rest of the body. Five researchers, each with a different area of expertise, and they all have one thing in common. They all chose Mass Ioneer for their life's work. 
Uh, Massachusetts Iron Ear is a special place in every metric. Uh, it's a uh, an incredible uh, place in terms of uh, clinical work and I'm uh, very fortunate to have outstanding colleagues uh, who really care about patients and helping them. Uh, so that's really special, that's unique. And of course, because of where we are and who we are, we um, get the best students. Uh, and of course, you cannot do any of this work that we do without uh, outstanding and highly motivated and driven students and uh, postdoctoral fellows uh, and uh, residents and clinical fellows. So all in all, uh, it's a wonderful and a special place and that's why I've spent here more years that, than I uh, am willing to admit. <laughs>